Poltergeist. <laughs> oh, pick the table. And welcome to Paranormal XL. <laughs> Paranormal XL Podcast. Gigi and Mama Mary in the haunted house. <laughs> We're really not. Or are we? We're outside of the haunted house. We are. The house is haunted. <laughs> yeah, I'm all looking so. up there. I'm like, I, I, I think I knew that, though. No, definitely with a male and a little girl. Yeah. We just made deals when I moved in. I remember that, yeah. yeah. This is what they could do, couldn't do. And we actually have really no real experiences. Every once in a while, the girls will talk about, like, uh, a shadow figure. Yeah. Going by their door. Jocelyn has. And then somebody knocking on their door. So you believe that it's just like the spirit's not necessarily poltergeist. Exactly. Yeah. It's just okay. spirit that's there. Because we are going to get into what all the million definitions of a poltergeist. Which, as I was saying on, a, on one of our drives, I guess we've only taken one that I, <laughs> I asked Gigi Bassett Polly, <laughs> have many, many words to say. <laughs> I haven't even drank that much. Oh, happy 4th of July, because we are yeah. recording this on the 4th of July, hence why we are outside. We figured, why the hell not? Big 4 Yeah, that's up to you. Gigi and Venus Flytrap are back. <laughs> I probably didn't say it right, did I? Venus Flytrap. <laughs> Look at the... <laughs> but, yeah, Look at the thing. Oh, back to the notes, because this is why we don't ever really get anything accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I... Was kind of wanting to maybe try something new. However, doing delving into this, it's taking a lot of my time. I came slightly obsessed with this case. So I'm going to have to set boundaries for myself. However, I had a lot of fun doing it. Well, yeah. It was something I could do at the house with um, work times and stuff changing for people around the house and whatnot. It gets, keeps me busy. And, you had time. You know, yeah. I And I enjoyed it. Did I scare the shit out of myself? Absolutely. <laughs> but sometimes that's fun to do. Keeps you on your toes. So... I'll say I kind of want to take more time and um, delving into some paranormal cases a little deeper than usual because there are episodes where we're like, okay, we just kind of hit the basics type of thing, which that's good too. Um, say I happen to be on a poltergeist kick as I wanted to do some deep research. That's what she uh, said. <laughs> and see about finding some answers. I have learned so much, even even though I'm only one case deep. <laughs> Is this a poltergeist or a poltergeist? Yeah. <laughs> poltergeist. <laughs> I love that. Love it. Love. Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. With this, I wanted to take a couple episodes and talk about poltergeist for a little bit and let you all know what cases to be expecting coming up. So I want to get into the Bell Witch of 1817 case, the Rosenheim, Germany case, and a case out of Scotland from the 60s. These are all um, a little more well-known of the poltergeist cases where a lot of times... They'll be like, oh, it was a poltergeist. Well, you see them all the time on the TV shows and stuff right now. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily what they ultimately are. It's just an e- kind of an easy explanation when you can't come to an explanation. Kind of, and, yeah. and you don't see an apparition or anything. Uh, that's our special guest. <laughs> Polty. <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway. <laughs> so the first one we will be getting into is the Enfield Poltergeist, the case that is associated with the Conjuring 2 movie. Hence, that's why I was like, oh my god, I need to know more about this. So it's the basis of that movie. But the actual Poltergeist account, however, as we all know, things are dramatized for entertainment purposes. Things taken in, things taken out. to Because they got to make the story two hours long. It wasn't just, so JoJo woke up and some books went flying across the room 12 weeks in a row and then they stopped. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not going to make a very good movie. So you have to add more in, because Hollywood is Hollywood. So first, let's get into what the definition for poltergeist. I tried to find a few different um, definitions. I know just from watching the movies, being an investigator, doing science research and spiritual research on the true meanings, there are different there are different levels, I believe, on the term. Uh, I wanted to share some of the ones that I found online, and then then we can talk about what we yeah. what what we think that they are. So, well, I'll read the first one. You can read the second one, and so on and so forth. Sure. <laughs> so it's a noun, <laughs> a ghost or other supernatural being supposedly responsible for physical disturbances such as loud noises and objects thrown around. Loud noises. Well, number two in ghost lore, poltergeist is a type of ghost or spirit that is responsible for physical disturbances such as loud noises and objects being moved or destroyed. Most claims about or fi- about or fictional descriptions of poltergeists show them as capable of pinching, biting, hitting, and tripping people. Ow, fuckers. Yeah. Number three, a noisy, usually mischievous ghost held to be responsible for unexplained noises. Number four. <laughs> Number 
four. Door number four. In occultism, a disembodied spirit or supernatural force credited with certain malicious or disturbing phenomena, such as unexplained noises, sudden movements, or breaking of household items. Poltergeists are also blamed for violent actions, throwing stones or setting fire to clothing and furniture. Such events are said to be sporadic, unpredictable, and often repetitive. Do you like how I said repetitive? Repetitive. Oh, they're back. They're back. They're back. They're here. Well, I was going to say, most of this just describes me when I'm on Shark Week. Let's be honest. <laughs> Throwing rocks, pinching people, yelling, Bite. biting, biting <sighs> tripping. And number five. <laughs> I think we're recording a true crime episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that damn polder guy's getting loud around here. <laughs> So perhaps one of the most popular terms most of us have heard when it comes to ghosts, obviously the poltergeist, meaning noisy ghost. It is said to have the ability to move or knock things over, make noise, and manipulate the physical environment. While many of us had heard the term before, poltergeist is actually one of the rarest forms of hauntings, and to many the most terrifying. Loud knocking sounds, lights turning on and off, doors slamming, even fireworks, just kidding, even fires breaking out mysteriously have been attributed to this type of a spiritual disturbance. Another frightening aspect of the poltergeist is that the event usually starts out slowly and mildly, then begins to intensify. And while many times poltergeist activity is harmless and ends quickly, they have been known to actually become dangerous. Some experts... Bleh, some experts... <laughs> Explain it as a mass form of energy that a living person is controlling unknowingly. However, the case may be, poltergeists have caught the attention of paranormal enthusiasts and as experts, scientists, and many others who are just plain curious. So, all right, what what do you think that a poltergeist, like, if you were like, somebody came up and was like, Mama Mary or Venus Flytrap, <laughs> what, you need to write this book on poltergeist and tell us what it means. What would you put, Alan? I don't, I know, I I think there's a couple of different theories. I think you have very gifted people who maybe there's already activity in the house, but because they're gifted, it kind of wakens up more. And so energy vibes. So when somebody has a naturally strong vibration, especially when they don't know what they're doing with it or what to do with it, um, if they're upset, the house gets upset. Mm -hmm. If they're happy, the house gets happy. It quiets down. And so it's like the more, depending on the type of energy you're putting into a home, that's what comes out. So really, I think, like, it coincides what they were just saying that sometimes it just, the people themselves pick up the energy in the house. I've, you know, doing research, I've just, I've discovered that teenage kids, especially when they have gifts, have the ability to, you know, make things happen. Some people have a lot of spiritual gifts that they don't even know they have, and they naturally make things happen, and it's not spiritual. Yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> now, I have in this other part what I think, and I put also some of the research that's went into it because after doing the research and finding out the numbers boys versus girls age groups blah 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 that type of thing um but parapsychologists have different thoughts as well as what i had just went through they view poltergeist as a type of ghost or supernatural entity which are responsible for psychological and physical disturbance others believe well that such energy originates from unknown energy associated with the living person or location just like you said skeptics on the other hand prefer mundane explanations such as attention seeking pranks and trickery see that's when you start getting in you get into the where you get left on the fence and it, it, the case that the first case that we're going to be covering the Enfield case is it one that I want to believe absolutely however there's a lot of stuff in the movie that wasn't shown or taking out and I'm still on the fence like even knowing some the facts that came out with it uh, my explanation as poltergeists tend to prefer women to men, from my research, I found more cases than not about young females. They seem to be more active the younger and closer to starting womanhood, which leaves me... Poltergeist wants to get down. <laughs> get down. It leaves me with the question, questioning the power of women, which I'm a woman, so clearly I'm going to say that we're powerful, but... I mean that besides us just putting our mind to something and doing something that we all, as women, can agree to, our connection with the universe itself. And this is where the spiritual side of me is going mm -hmm. to come out is, you know, I, I believe from doing things and being able to notice things that, that we are controlled by the moon, the sun, the stars, the, the, the universe. The, mm -hmm. the, it controls all of us. I, I think women more so than men only because we are open to it. We let it happen. So... So I won't get into much detail on my thoughts because we'll just, that's a rabbit hole. A big, 
big giant rabbit hole. <laughs> you like rabbit holes. Um, um, but it's also not health class, and I don't want to talk about you know the women's. <laughs> well, yeah, holes. I won't get into much detail about my thoughts on this because it's not health class, and not everyone is into the power of the universe. They're and the knowing of the power the universe has on us as humans. But to be fair, documented experiences of poltergeist activity range from 8 to 78. So who knows? It comes down to if it really happened or if somebody in the household, let's say, like, because you're more open, mm-hmm. you were noticing things. But or somebody else might not. one of the younger girls in the house, they're the ones that made this happen. But mm-hmm. they're not seeing it because they're not open as you. Yep. So then you have to dig into all these cases separately to find out if it, all these cases had a young female in the house or you know what i mean like to get mm-hmm. like actual statistics out of the way or whatever um some of the best poltergeists are thought to be put on or acted out or a little of both and that's what i think actually the one that we're going to jump into was it, it was a little of both so there's one so a nine i'm gonna hit there's three the hodgen family is the one that we're gonna cover in the next episode the other two are ones there'll be cases later on. Um, so in 1967, at a lawyer's office in Rosenheim, Germany, strange things started to happen in the presence of the 19-year-old secretary, Anne-Marie, I thought that was the last one, Charbel. <laughs> Paintings and overhead light fittings started swinging while fluorescent tubes unscrewed themselves and massive spikes in electrical activity occurred. The speaking clock was also called multiple times per minute and furniture has moved the police utility company officials psychics and parapsychologists hans bender investigated without explanation but many believe it was all fake all due to hidden nylon threads especially given that the incident stopped when charbel left the firm in 1968 so that's a basic thing that's another one i want to get into however if it was her that caused this poltergeist it would stop when she's gone yeah, that's true. It doesn't mean that she had strings attached to everything or able to manipulate the electricity and whatnot. Uh, did you want to do the next one? Or? Sure. Is that sure. chili whack? Sure, let's call it that. <laughs> Canada! <laughs> the chili whack poltergeist <laughs> in Canada, for example was active for only two months between 1951 and 1952. During this time, the poltergeist produced loud and violent hammerings on the walls, accompanied by occasional flying objects. The Brother Dolly case included a range of phenomena, stains, carvings, and images, and Welsh words generally of a religious nature. And these persisted for several years. See, again, it's one of those things, even in the, when they try to tell us what it is, or the explanation of poltergeist, it doesn't last for long. It doesn't have to last for long. So it's like, if you, okay, I've been watching Dead Files a lot. One mm-hmm. thing she tells these people to do when she says it's a poltergeist is start doing yoga and meditating and whatnot so you can get yourself grounded, gather all your bad thoughts, because mm-hmm. all that energy's got to go somewhere. Yep, you're creating that, it. Yeah. yeah, and that bad energy, I don't know, this is me kind of learning as I'm talking, correct me if I'm like wrong or you want to smack me in the face. <laughs> so when we're angry, we're putting out these bad energy. Energy. Is it heavier? The bad energy heavier? So we need some place to go. So it just like yeah, well, it, it manifests. Uh, it, it's sort of like when I first got into uh, spirituality. So you go through that that stage of learning what to do with your energy. Mm-hmm. And I remember losing my temper in a huge storm picking up. Okay. And, and then as soon as I stopped being a man, it went away. And I remember saying that was a really weird storm. And it, I remember your dad saying, "No, that was more like the wrath of Mary." <laughs> <laughs> and like poles mm-hmm. were broken, like it knocked down poles, and mostly it was just a gust of wind. But um, so I actually went and got my own reading after that. Okay. And she said your, your guides were trying to show you what your energy can do, how powerful you Thoughts are. Thoughts are very powerful. You have to be careful what you think. Everything's a process. So if you can't control your emotions, anybody, especially if you're spiritually gifted, is capable of creating havoc. So if you're on one, you're, if you're, you have a lot of anxiety and you're depressed, you're going to create that stuff around you. Yeah, we need to get that under wraps when that happens, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Grounding because, your energy. Yeah, because and... then you'll notice yourself, man, everything's going wrong. This is going wrong. The car broke, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my, my lights keep going out in my house or, you know, just this random stuff starts all going wrong. But you just keep staying angry because all this stuff's going wrong. Mm-hmm. Take a minute. Be like, all right, I'm mad. Get, allow yourself five, ten minutes to get pissed off. Go flip a table, do what yeah. you got to do. Move on. And then you're going to notice that stuff's 
not happening as much anymore. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the, I say that the natural causes of that stuff will, of happening will still happen, but it's not nearly as much as when you're just stayed angry about it. will be just like it. something that happens. It won't be anything that's significant. Right. Uh, one of the most famous poltergeist cases we will be getting into uh, happened in the UK, the Hodgson family. And their, bleh, it was in their council house in Enfield, North London between 1977 and 1979. It was the scene of demonic voices, objects moving without explanation, levitation, and strange noises. Events on the two teenage events focused on the two teenage girls, Margaret and Janet. And that's where like the womanhood starts playing in. And once we get to the end of that, the third episode of that series, it kind of explains it a little more mm -hmm. of like when every like the really stuff that makes you go, huh, when everybody else was like, No, it's not really happening, blah 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 and then they get to this point and they're like, Oh, and that's when, like, it made itself known. This this ball of energy made itself known that it was there when she started her womanhood. Like, yeah. it, it was crazy. And that doesn't get talked about in the movie, even. Yeah. Um, because that's not very entertaining, really. No. But I, we're not trying to be entertaining. We're trying to enlighten you in case you do think that you have a poltergeist going on in your house. You don't got to write in and, and wait for dead files to get to your house. I mean, you could. Let them know you heard it from here, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? So some believe that, um, oh, I had more on that one, but it's okay because we're jumping into that one. Some believe that emotional stress can be cause the activity, which we were just saying. Mm -hmm. um, ghost hunters and paranormal and paranormals propose that poltergeists are actually the emotions of troubled individuals built up during times of stress. This theory, known as the spontaneous reoccurring psychokinesis, did I just say all that right? You did. Good job. <sighs> I'm so proud of myself right now. Suggest that this built up stress then unconsciously projects outward in the form of mental energy, which affects the physical environment and produces the phenomena <laughs> attributed to poltergeist. So that goes into you saying that our energies are, or our, our, our thoughts are powerful. But that's what I mean by I've consistently have said forever that the mind is such a powerful thing. So that's ultimately, I mean, that's when I say mind, I'm thinking your thoughts, thinking your thoughts. So you put all that together, like, ah, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crazy. And something else that you will learn further that when we delve deeper into this case that um, that Janet was able to do, that wasn't talked about. So others believe that there are spirits of the dead. <laughs> yeah, people also believe that spirits of the dead are responsible for poltergeist activity because some people who experience them perceive an underlying intelligence in meaningful communication with an under with an otherworldly be <laughs> otherworldly being. This view pro proposes that disembodied consciousness or soul survives bodily death. Well, I do believe that's true, and I really think sometimes when you a lot of people when they're experiencing hauntings, it's when spirit crosses over, we go over to the astral, and so the astral, all we do is take a take on a different vehicle an energetic vehicle it's called the causal energy uh -huh. and think about all the spirits that are over there who have lived in your home or lived in your area that are really just on the astral living their causal energy and so maybe it's really not so much a haunting it's just their energy on a different vibration so different it wouldn't plane. be a poltergeist at all it would be like an intelligent spirit, spirit. coming it's back so do you energy. think uh, this i need to say this now because by the time we get to the fourth episode of this i'm not gonna remember <laughs> my thought here so do you think okay when we are putting out what causes the poltergeist so when i picture poltergeist i'm thinking like all of our negative energy sitting here in a, <laughs> in a big black ball okay <laughs> so do you think that's enough energy to bring somebody else over that connects itself and that's why like in the enfield case that we're going to be talking about that they were able to put a name with it that it didn't yeah, necessarily it's just... It's just spiritual energy. It's always here. It's just, um, right. like, right where we're sitting right now, this is a vibration. There's also yeah, higher vibrations that are just surrounding kidding. us. And so, <laughs> really, it's all about the vibration that you can connect with the most. That's why, like, when I go places, I don't worry about bringing negative, neg negative entities home because they're not going to like my vibration. It's too high. Exactly. So, if you're a negative person, what are you going to draw forth from you in your area from the fourth dimension? Probably negative energy. So, sometimes it's really not a haunting at all. It's That's where your poltergeist comes from, is the negative energy that vibrates on the fourth dimension connected with yours because it likes it. Right. If you didn't have that kind of energy, you would bring spirit forth to you that is more of a loving energy, a higher vibration. And, and you might not see anything at all except for right. protection and Be little things that Because happen. they don't want you to feel scared. What you're going to feel is, is protected. Love. Yeah. yeah, in love. In love. 
Because we all love and that, love is I us. really think that's where it, that wraps up everything we were just saying. That's where your poltergeist energy comes from. Mm-hmm. Is when you you have that astral plane. Because when you cross over, you go to the astral. You take on your causal form. You do your purgatory. You do your life review. Once you do that, you go to the emotional realm, which is still the astral. It's just a higher vibration. And then you go through all the emotional things that you learned. Once you get all that sort of like you gather all of that into a file folder take it to your higher self and then say do we do it again so we literally have like layers and layers of dimension of what we can connect with spiritually so right if you don't want to deal with poltergeist shit she just said a whole lot of words then don't have you know don't have the negative energy <laughs> don't be a dick and heal. don't be a dick <laughs> don't be a dick pretty much and if you don't know you're being a dick ask <laughs> yeah, they'll tell you somebody will tell you <laughs> So, okay, obviously we're going to have some naysayers. So, the naysayers, skeptics, if you will. But you can, I I like, I'm not necessarily a fan. I'm not necessarily a fan of naysayers. However, I love skeptics that are Mm open-minded. Really? Skeptics would say, or naysayers would say, that's all misinterpretation. Misinterpretation is most likely to occur when people believe a place is haunted. And they are looking for evidence to confirm this. So, there's a term for that, and I can never remember the term. However, I know it happens a lot where people post, like, the, uh, paranormal pictures and they're like do you see this do you, why don't yeah. you see this i think or you do see something however it's because that's the way the tree branch is laid or what well, i have a picture like that where it looks like a little girl had her face a half a body very very convincing however i personally i 100 percent believe it's that term i can't say where you yeah. think it's that but it's but it's not but it's cool to look at cool to kind of research the picture and mm-hmm. it does kind of go with the story of the property that we were on however i don't necessarily you know i wasn't getting a vibe i wasn't you know being open and I, it wasn't just me as an open person there i had a group with me half of them open half of them skeptics so like none yeah. of us felt it you know of course things when we think things are going to happen we hear things again though that's how powerful the mind is you can't tell me it didn't happen my mind may have did it and it happened you yep. know you know i i that's where it gets in the gray area. Um, so in this way, a lot of poltergeist activity can actually be attributed to inaccurate perception of natural phenomena. However, even natural phenomena, it had to come from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so take the case of the woman haunted by a ticking clock. It was actually discovered that the noise was created by a tiny insect. Other cases, such as the curse of the spinning Egyptian, an Egyptian statue in the Manchester Museum, appeared to turn itself during the day. Both of these cases have normal reasonings behind them, but let's say it wasn't the tiny insect making the clock noise, that the insect just happened to be there at the time they were looking for the, another reason for the ticking. True, that is true. Um, I, it is a, I cannot see, I know what story they're talking about, and that actually happened in Marshall. Mm-hmm. Um, they made a movie on it. Uh, I, 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 I can't see a bug making a noise every second on the second yeah, for years. That's true. Um, and not moving. It, the bug's got to poop. The bug's got to eat. But it's gonna die. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But this is why I love everything paranormal because we're like, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? You know, that's to me paranormal equals the question why. <laughs> so I can just keep asking why and how. And at some point, there isn't going to be an answer. Then we keep digging. It's pretty great. What are your thoughts on that? Like, let's say, the clock situation. I think if you're looking for an answer, you're going to find find the answer anywhere. So you can either have faith and have a belief and research the paranormal, or you can... Just accept out, something that's thrown out there. Accept that it's there, or go out of your way to find a reason for it. Any reason at all, just because you want to have a reason for it. Right. Right. Now I want to dig into that answer, because I'm like, okay, well, why didn't anybody else have this bug? Mm-hmm. You know, why has this ever happened to anybody else? Or, you know, like, the whys. They're all over the place. So I am hoping that you all enjoy what is coming to the podcast. Like I said, the first poltergeist case we are going to be covering is the Enfield Polk. The Enfield Poltergeist. I almost said Poltergeist. Um, <laughs> I've been so indulged in all the research and finding in this case. There are so many questions and not so many answers in this one. Um, When you dig as deep as I have in this case, I'm honestly just 50-50 on it if this is... A fully a hoax, all true, or half and half. I usually will lose interest if I think that it's a hoax on certain ghost stories, you know, whatever. I'll always hear somebody out, or I'll read the whole story, article, whatever. However, I can usually make my mind up within the first five, ten minutes. I know you feel that way, too, where you're like, okay, check your electricity, your wiring's bad, or, you know, that type of thing. Um, And most of the time, I will try my very, very best to debunk something to at least my satisfaction, you know, but again... When I'm like, oh, I debunked this. I debunked it for myself. Doesn't mean I debunked it for you. Mm-hmm. You know, that, I, 
or vice versa. Where I'll be like, no, Mary, it was this. And you'll be like, no, I'm pretty sure it was this. But I'm happy with my answer, and I can go on my life with mine, and you can go on with yours. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, it, you don't have to be right or wrong. That's the thing about paranormal. Sometimes there just isn't an answer. There yeah. isn't a final answer. That's true. There's, oh, I, I got I got to read this because I was really smart at my, my usage of the word appease. <laughs> With that said, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just came up with evidence to appease my standing. You're welcome. Drop my vape. (laughs) (laughs) So anything else just on the basic covering of the word protocol? You know what I'm trying to say. Not really. Just, it is a very interesting. Yeah. It's a very interesting topic and everybody has their own point of view on it. Yeah. And well, then you start watching the shows and stuff. And that's where I've learned where I'm just like, because there's so many different directions. On, different directions, different opinions. And, yeah, because, yeah. well, the same person may think this is a a poltergeist. So you're like, okay, that makes sense. And then they call this other situation, and it's a poltergeist. And you're like, oh, wait, why is that I'm a poltergeist? So confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just said this wasn't one because of this, but it was because of this. And anyway, I think everybody, the understanding of just paranormal in general, you find the answer to appease yourself. <laughs> There you go. A penis yourself. <laughs> Just penis saying. Penis fly trap. Penis fly trap. There Love you it. Go. Penis fly trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. And with that being said, <sighs> thank you again for listening to Paranormal XL podcast. If you have any leads on a poltergeist case, or you or you yourself think you might be dealing with one, please reach out. ParanormalXL at writeme dot com. <laughs> You are all so wonderful and amazing, and Mama Mary and I appreciate you all so much. Don't we? Don't we? Don't we? We do. We do. <laughs> Someday we're going to get a game show. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> in a fly trap. Stay kind, stay humble, and remember, don't yuck someone else's yum. Ever.